This is part three of my auto print DVD collection. I'd like to state again that uh, it's only these versions that are out of print. Sometimes two studios will release the same movie or the same studio will re-release the same movie. Anyway, we have Dead Man on Campus. It's a Mark Paul Gossler movie, is that his name? Zach Morris from uh, Saved by the Bell. Yeah, Mark Paul Gossler. And Tom Everett Scott. Tom Everett Scott was in that uh, awful sequel to American Werewolf in London. The, the one in Paris. Anyway, they play a couple of screw-up college kids that are flunking the semester. And they discover a rule that if your roommate commits suicide, you get straight A's. For that semester or year. I believe it's a semester. So they set out to find a roommate that uh, is suicidal, or they think is suicidal. Um, Jason Siegel and Linda Cardellini make an appearance in this. It's pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, the one scene I remember is they're running away from the police in a car with the suicidal roommate. Crazy roommate. And he says, oh, they really hate it when you do this. And he pulls out a gun and starts shooting at the police. Very funny scene. I mean, I'm not saying that shooting at the police is funny, but the scene in context of the movie was funny. So, don't hate. <clears throat> After that, we have Clone Wars. This, to me, is the better version of Clone Wars. You can't really compare the two because they're done by different people in different companies. Um, a lot of the characters are still the same. There's no Ahsoka Tano in this one though. But yeah, it's it's really good. I like the art style. I believe it's... The guy who did this, Gennady Tartakovsky, he did Samurai Jack and... He might have done Dexter's Lab, I forget. He's a good uh, cartoonist. Uh, I like his shows. But yeah, these have been out of print for a while. If you haven't seen these, they're worth checking out. I really like them. That's Volume 1 and Volume 2. They're very short. Um, each episode is like a couple of minutes. They were like interstitials. They were put between programming uh, during broadcast. But they group all of the shorts together to make it more cohesive. Um, it's good. Neon Maniacs. Uh, this movie is what I think of when I think of 80's cable television. Trashy 80's cable television. Um, it's not a good movie. I like it though. I, I really like this one. There are some mutant killers or, I mean, they don't really go into what they are, but supernatural or mutated, but they're in San Francisco, they live under a bridge, um, they go around killing people, there are different killers, one's a executioner, there's an Indian, there's a soldier with an M16, it's pretty ridiculous, but, uh, I like it. It's, like I said, it's one of those movies I think of when I think of the 80s. Neon Maniacs. Going in the opposite direction of Neon Maniacs, we have Father Goose. It's a Cary Grant movie. It takes place in the South Pacific during World War II. Um, he plays kind of like a shiftless boat captain who's drunk a lot of the time um, he gets roped in by the local military to uh, spot planes they stick him on an island and he radios in when he he's, you know finds enemy activity and stuff um, he runs into a bunch of schoolgirls and their matron their teacher who ended up on the island and 
Most of the movie is just him trying to coexist with a bunch of girls. It's really funny. It's one of the later Cary Grant movies. He's older in this one. I highly recommend this one. Freeway. Uh, probably a lesser known Reese Witherspoon movie. And it also stars Kiefer Sutherland. I haven't seen this in a while. So I may not get the plot points correct. But she's like a... I hope I don't offend anybody, but she's a hood rat. She's like a white girl living in the inner city. Very rough. Uh, but anyway, she runs afoul of uh, Kiefer Sutherland, who's... I don't know if he's a serial killer or a serial rapist. But he's a really messed up dude. Yeah, it, it it's a pretty messed up movie, pretty pretty disturbing at times. Um, yeah, you you you've never seen Reese Witherspoon like this though. I mean, I haven't seen her play a, a similar character since. Don't want to get too much into the story because I don't want to spoil it. Bubba Hotep. Bruce Campbell fans, you already know what this movie is and what it's about. But Bruce Campbell plays Elvis. Elvis is alive and well, living in a retirement home. And one of his fellow retirees is John F. Kennedy, who's apparently alive and well and is an older African-American man. Uh, yeah, Ossie Davis plays the part of JFK. It's JFK and Elvis. They discover that a mommy, who for some reason is wearing cowboy boots and a, I think he's wearing a cowboy hat too. I haven't seen this movie in a while. But the mummy's going around killing off uh, fellow retirement home residents. So it's basically him and Ossie Davis trying to fight the mummy. It's really good. It's it's one of my more favorite Bruce Campbell performances. Dead and Breakfast, uh, it's a zombie movie. I really like this one. Although these zombies are able to talk and use tools, um, it's more their complexions change. You know, They're not shambling Romero zombies. They're not uh, crazy 28 Days Later zombies. They can organize. They can use tools. It's good. There's Jeremy Sistos in it. Uh, if you're a fan of... Um, Suburgatory, he plays the dad in Suburgatory, um, there's David Carradine's daughter, I think it's David Carradine's daughter, she was in Eureka as, uh, the sheriff's sister, she's in this, um, and I think Jeffrey Morgan, I think that's his name, the comedian from the Watchmen movie, I think he plays the sheriff in this. It's, you know, one of those, a bunch of friends goes out to the countryside for the weekend and, you know, shit happens and there's a zombie plague. It's good, though. I don't think a lot of people know about this one. Explorers, a movie from my childhood. Starring the late River Phoenix, Ethan Hawke. Um... Bunch of kids discover some kind of alien sphere and they figure out what it is and they build. Well, the thing that they build isn't actually like a spaceship, it's just a conveyance, it's a means to get somewhere. The alien discovery that they made is a protective shield that goes around their little contraption, their little vehicle. But yeah, they, they discover a message from aliens and they go off into space. Pretty basic, straightforward. I I really like this movie. I liked it as a kid and I still like it today. And River Phoenix, he was always a good actor. Um, it's a shame he died so young. 
Last up, we have Deal of the Century, a lesser known Chevy Chase movie. Also stars Gregory Hines and Sigourney Weaver. This was a satire of the defense industry, specifically in the 1980s. For those of you who are alive and sentient in the 80s, you'll remember that uh, they're probably still doing it today, but uh, we were paying, uh, taxpayers were paying, you know, $800 for a toilet seat, $500 for a plain screwdriver. Um, it was a pretty big, uh, I wouldn't say scandal, but I remember it being in the news a lot. It, I'm surprised, I'm really surprised that people didn't get more upset than they did. But yeah, it's, these guys sell uh, weapons to governments. Um, I forget the main storyline. Um, but I think they're trying to sabotage some big evil corporation that's selling some kind of defective weapon to the United States. Um, it's good. Uh, one particular scene I remember, I believe it's Gregory Hines. He gets into an argument with somebody in a parking lot. And he goes to his trunk and he pulls out a flamethrower. And I think he burns the, the guy's car. That's pretty funny. But yeah, lesser known Chevy Chase movie, Deal of the Century. It's worth checking out. I don't know if you should buy it, but if you're a fan of Chevy Chase, you'd probably like it. Well, that's part three of my out-of-print DVD collection. Stay tuned for part four.